Wow, what a beautiful morning to be in church. Glad you're here. Thank you for, for joining us as we, as we listen today about the story of the Good Samaritan and as we reflect on what God is doing for us. So welcome. Let's take a moment and just uh, pause and, and center our hearts. Would you please stand as we begin our worship? Bless the Lord, old people, sing. Let the sound of praise ring out. Come and hear what the Lord has done. The Lord who has made everything. Spend our hearts now as we confess our sins before God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and our neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sins. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you against one another, and against the earth entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God's love encompasses us all. God's love embraces us and invites us to confess and to admit our mistakes. And so it's on this morning that I announce to you the forgiveness of your sins in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray together. Oh God, God, your mercy delights us and the world longs for your loving care. 
hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now is our chance to share the peace of God with each other. Uh, will you turn to your neighbors and across the aisle and the other side and just wish each other God's love? God's peace. Good morning, God's peace. Good morning, God's peace. Good morning, God's peace. Good morning, God's peace. God's peace. Good morning, God's peace. God, God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace, Randy. God's peace. Bitch. God's peace. God's peace, Marlene. John, God's peace. God's peace. Hey. We got him. They got me. God's peace. to the throne of mercy where would I kneel but at this cross of grace how great the love how strong the hand that holds us beautiful so beautiful so here I sell to lift you high Jesus scars of healing there is a son who came in grace and truth how great the love that carries us to kindness wonderful you're wonderful so here I bow to lift you high Jesus be glorified Would the kids come forward for a children's sermon? I got a real cute prop this morning. How's it going? Good. Hi. You can come on up. So, do you guys know who this is? Yeah, this is baby Theo. This is my son. Um, I'm pretty biased, but I think he's the cutest baby in the entire world. <laughs> you guys can disagree, but I'm pretty sure he is. So, 
last night, I woke up at 3.30 a.m., I changed his diaper, I gave him a bottle, and I stayed up with him for a whole hour. I am so tired, you guys. I'm so tired. But you know what? I did that because he needed it and because I love him. He's my son. Of course I'm going to change his diaper. Of course I'm going to feed him. I, I care about him. This morning, we're going to hear a story about four different men, about an Israelite who is beaten and robbed, about a priest who walks on the other side of the road to avoid him, a Levite who walks on the other side of the road to avoid him, and a Samaritan who helps him. The Israelites and the Samaritans didn't really get along. They didn't love each other. They hated each other. But this Samaritan is going to help this man because that's what God calls us to do. Whether we love someone, whether we disagree with them, whether we're angry with them, God calls us to love them and to help them. That's what we get to do as Christians, to help everyone. So let's say a word of prayer. Holy God, oh, sorry, repeat after me. Thank you, Gene. Holy God, thank you for other people. Whether we love them or struggle with them, whether they are our friend or our enemy, help us to show them love. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, you guys. Yeah. We'll continue with our readings. Good morning. The lesson today is from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors when you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? The lawyer answered, 
You shall love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of rob robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, a priest... A rabbi and a pastor walk into a bar. The bartender says, what is this? Some kind of joke? <laughs> I, I love that joke. It is not funny. It's just awkward. That's all it is. But I love that joke because it plays on the form. People started laughing after I had said, a priest, a rabbi, and a pastor, because we know what's coming, right? We know that pattern. Comedy rule of three. We've, we've heard those jokes so many times before. Uh, a Frenchman, a German, and an American walk into a bar. We hear those jokes and we know what's coming. It's the same thing with the Good Samaritan, we think. We think we know that story, but it's actually based on an ancient pattern. The people would have known what was coming. Or they would have thought they would have known. So I thought I would share one of my stories this morning. When I was in elementary school, I was super cool. I mean, not nearly as cool as I am now, but uh, I was pretty cool. I was in the math club, yeah. Um, I enjoyed reading a lot. I, uh, I especially loved reading sci-fi. Sci-fi was the best. And me and my friend Nathan loved a series called Animorphs. It was a series of uh, uh, books about aliens, the Andalites, coming down and giving powers to teenagers to transform into animals to fight against the evil Yurks. If you're not catching on, I wasn't super cool. Nathan and I used to play Animorphs on the playground. We'd run around and flap our arms like we had transformed into birds. We would jump up in the air and kick our legs like we were dolphins jumping out of the water. And yeah, we'd roll around on the ground like we were snakes, of course. So along with me having fun and loving this, there were some people who made fun of me for it. There was one kid in particular. One kid who was really mean, like more than I thought could happen. He was, he was awful to me. He was a jerk. He made fun of me. He swore at me. He punched me. He even spit on me a couple of times. This kid was awful to me. Made me hate going to school. 
And I assumed after elementary school, we'd all grow up and it'd be just perfectly fine. Middle school, he was just as mean. And then finally, I got to high school, and then I could choose my own classes. I could avoid him. And I'll admit, there were a couple of times when I saw he was in my class, and I transferred to a different hour. I didn't want to have to confront him. I didn't want to have to talk to him. I didn't want to have to see him. If I'm being honest, I hated him. He made me feel terrible. He made me hate everything. He made me feel like I was worthless. I only wanted to avoid him. So one day, I'm walking home from school. Walking home, it's right after school, so I'm walking down South Grade Road in Hutch, and that's a pretty busy road. There's a ton of cars driving by, and I'm just taking my time, just relaxing, walking along, not paying much attention, and I trip and fall. Trip and fall right onto the sidewalk, big road rash on my chin, and out of pain, I roll to the side and end up in the dirt. I've never been more embarrassed in my life because Hutch, like New Ulm, isn't a big place. Everybody knows everybody. If you don't, if you don't know them by name, you've probably seen them at Walmart or at Cashwise. And my dad was a doctor in town, so I'm sure a ton of people driving by were just saying, isn't that Dr. Nissen's kid? What's he doing in the dirt? What's he doing? I was mortified. And then it happened. I saw a tiny, beat-up, red pickup truck pull up. I knew what I was going to hear. I was going to hear the door open, and I was going to hear... First day with the new legs, Dave? If you wanted to roll around in the mud, why didn't you go with your other pigs? It was that same bully from elementary school. I knew he was just going to be awful. That's the only reason he would stop. But instead, he reached out his hand and he picked me up, brushed the dirt off my shirt opened his car door, drove me home. I got out, said thank you, and that was it. We didn't become friends. It didn't change our relationship, but it did change how I viewed the world. This guy who I thought was just awful, I thought he would never do anything good for a single person in his entire life had made me feel cared for, had shown me compassion that I did not expect. That was my Good Samaritan moment. That's when I started to understand this story. See, there's a pattern in this story that we see. There's the priest, the Levite, and the Good Samaritan. But that's not what the Israelites would have been expecting in the story. There was a pattern to this. There was that same rule of three that we had in that joke. There was always the priest who was too high and mighty to do anything. There was the Levite who didn't care about the common man. But then finally, there was the good, upstanding, everyday Israelite who would help. That's how this story was supposed to go. Everybody knew, okay, the priest is going to be a jerk. The Levite's going to be a jerk. The common Israelite will stand up for what is right. But Jesus said, Samaritan. We don't understand the context, but the Samaritans weren't people to the Israelites. They were monsters. These two groups had hated each other for 200, 300, 400 years because the Israelites believed you had to worship in the temple. They had the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, that told them all you needed to know about God. So they knew what God required. The Samaritans had those same five books. 
but they had an additional thing that said they should worship on a specific mountain. Slight difference, but they each saw each other as blaspheming against the will of God, as lying for their own selfish purposes to detract from the one true faith. They hated each other. In a history book, it's related that at one point, a fight broke out between Samaritans and Israelites. This wasn't between two armies. This was just at a market. Over a hundred people were killed. No swords, no knives, just fists, feet, and rocks. These people hated each other. That's all they saw when they heard a Samaritan, a monster. So Jesus took their expectations. Priest, Levite, Samaritan. And flipped it on its head. The only person who would care is someone they saw as other, as hated, as useless. But that was the person who stopped. That was the person who showed love. At the end of the story, Jesus asks, who was this man's neighbor? And the man doesn't even say the word Samaritan. He still struggles thinking that a Samaritan could do something good. He says, the one who showed him kindness was his neighbor. And Jesus says to go and do likewise. Not to help those who are like you, or help those who act like you, or look like you, or think like you, or behave like you, but to go and do likewise to people you don't even care about, because you don't have that opportunity. There are people you should care. My favorite part of this story is how it describes the Samaritan walking up. In our translation, it says he walks up, sees the man, and is moved with pity. But in the original Greek, it says he's hit in the splachna. Can you guys say that word? It's one of my favorites. Splachna. Splachna. You gotta get some phlegm in there. It literally means hit in the guts, punched in the innards, hit right in the intestines with compassion. The priest walks by. The Levite walks by. The Samaritan is punched in the gut with what he needs to do. So what's that going to take for us? What's going to punch us in the gut? What's going to be the nagging voice in the back of our head that says, this isn't right, we need to do something? There are so many people in this world who need help, who need compassion, who need care. And some of them are our friends. Some of them are our family. And we gladly help them. We gladly care for them. But what if they look different than us? What if they vote different than us? What if they speak different than us? What if we don't have anything in common Are we going to walk on the other side of the road? Are we going to ignore that gut punch? There are so many people who need care and compassion. The Bible talks about caring for the orphan, the widow, the poor, the immigrant, the refugee. People who are your next door neighbor and people who are a half a world away because they need to know that they are created in the image of God, that they are loved, that they are wonderful, and that God has love and forgiveness for them. So think about that this week. What's punching you in the gut? What's hitting you in the splachna? What's that voice in the back of your head saying? Because that is God reaching out and tugging on your heartstrings. 
That's God reaching out and speaking to you, telling you to take action. And that is our calling as Christians. Not only to love the people who it's easy to love, but to care for the people who we struggle with, the people we don't understand, the people who don't understand us. That's the blessing of humanity. We have one thing that ties us together. That is God, our creator, our humanity. So how are we going to show that? How are we going to respond? Because we have to listen to that gut punch and take some steps forward to help those in need. Let's pray. Holy God, you have given us an opportunity, an opportunity to love and to serve, and we ignore it. It's hard. There are so many people in this world who we don't understand, but so many people who need help. And we ourselves need help. We need help to understand that the people who are halfway around the world, the people who look different than us, sound different than us, they're just like us. They need the same compassion, love, and care that you provide for us. Help us to reach out in love, to listen for your voice, to not walk on the other side of the road, but to get hit in the gut with compassion. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of the day.
confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with prayers. Our prayers will be interspersed with, Hear my pray, O God. Today we come to you, compassionate, caring God, as children who are open to being good Samaritans. We live in a quiet community that seems so distant from the turmoil and chaos of other places. Open our eyes and our minds to the needs of people, neighbors, both here in New Ulm and on the opposite sides of this planet. There is so much happening in our world, it's hard to know where to focus our attention. You are, we are grateful you see the pain, hear the cries, and listen to our prayers. We too bring our fears, our sorrows, our pains, our stresses to you. And we place in your hands our concerns for the environment, for the people in the path of storms that are brewing, for those caught in earthquakes, and for people swept up by disasters across this planet. Send your Holy Spirit to teach us ways to be peacemakers, justice advocates, caregivers, and generous providers. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those in positions of power and those who hold authority. Guide those who lead people in church, in local government, in industry, in scientific communities, and in educational circles. We pray for our politicians and government employees, civil servants, and judiciary staffs. Lord, bring wisdom and courage to them all. Guide them to make right, honest, and life-giving decisions. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the sick and distressed. Wherever Jesus walked, he brought healing and forgiveness. Give us faith to speak your name as we seek healing for all those who are in need. Today we name aloud in our hearts those who we know that are struggling. Bring hope, healing, and faith to Russ Brown and Carl Eng and Alex Fenske and Jess Giesecke and Sharon Hulke and Roger Julian, and Joan Peterson, and Darla Swanson, and Tom Wylagi, and Lloyd Julian, and Joel Johnson, and the family of Irv Joby. Lord, in your mercy. pray for our call committee. Lord, send your spirit to guide them as they interview and explore possibilities for choosing the next lead pastor in our congregation. Give them a depth sense of your guiding and directing. We also pray for the candidates who will be interviewed. 
stir up in them an awareness of your calling and open their hearts to your leading. Lord, for these and the many unexpected mercies that don't make the news, we give you thanks. For the joys of walking with friends, for the gift of friends and family and neighbors, for the enjoyment of our fragile blue planet, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. You be seated. So this morning we talked about how are you going to get hit in the splachna? How are you going to respond to God's call in this world? And we have a ton of options. We can, when we pass the plate around, we can put money in to support ministries. When we go out into the world, we can go and care for God's people. We can go out, we can donate to societies that help and care. Churches, organizations, the ELCA, uh, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. We can go and volunteer. That's all stewardship. Stewardship literally just means care. Care for what's happening. So as we pass the plates around, Think about how you're going to care for God's earth, how you're going to care for God's people, how you're going to care for all of this that we have. Now we'll give back to God what was first given to us. Let's pray. God of wisdom, in your Son, Jesus, you show us the way of life. You teach us to love one another and to share the gifts of our lives. Receive these gifts, fruit of the earth and harvest of our labor, and lead us in your wise guiding. So it was on that night in which he was betrayed that our Lord took bread. He broke it and he shared it with his disciples and he said, Take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took a glass of wine. He gave thanks and he shared it with them and he said, Take and drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this and remember me. Will you join us together as we pray the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. So bread and wine, body and blood, these are God's gifts to us. So I want to invite you to come and to participate and to be a part of this meal, this gift from God. We're going to be celebrating a long, up traditional style, um, making a horseshoe around the... Or are we not going to do that because of praise worship? Okay, I guess we're not going to do it that way. <laughs> we'll do stations, so I invite you to come and to receive the bread and the wine. This is God's gift, God's meal for us. So please come. You may be seated. Now may this, the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, strengthen you in your faith. Amen. For announcements, I want to invite you to sign up for the volunteer sheets that are out there. Help us with some worship as we go into the next month. Uh, lots of opportunities available, so uh, I think your name is, is being plugged for there. So um, take a look and, and um, take a chance or opportunity to, to sign up for that, okay? Next Sunday is Inside Outside Worship. We're going to do an outside outdoor worship, or we're going to do it inside, okay? So we're going to call it Inside Outside. 
We want you to bring your lawn chairs. We want you to come all decked out for an outside worship, but we're going to be in the social hall, okay? And so we're going to try something a little different this year and uh, enjoy. You know, that way we don't have to worry about the weather, huh? Yeah, and it might, might even be cool in here with air conditioning, yeah? Yeah. But anyway, we want you to try something different and have some fun next Sunday. So bring your lawn chairs, bring your chairs, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll meet out in the social hall and, and worship God in that venue, in that location, okay? Great. Look forward to seeing you then. Anything else that we should be talking about this morning? So next Thursday, the 25th, there is a game night. Yes. And it's for young adults without, that, you know, where there's no, like, set age group, age category. It's just, you know, get together. So there'll be um, tacos. We'll have uh, beef taco salad. We're going to get toppings for tacos. We'll have a board game, and we'll just sit and hang out, drink some beef tacos and play board games. So that will be a week from this Wednesday. This week from this Thursday, yeah. but it's okay. Great, good, thank you. Anything else? What? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, we got name tags. We know each other, so stay for coffee so we can visit with each other. Okay, stay for coffee and have a donut and uh, just uh, some fellowshipping, shipping time. Yeah, okay. I invite you to stand for the benediction. God is good. All, all the time. time. All the time. God is good. Go. Go knowing that you are beloved, that you are precious children of God, and enjoy this week that God has given us. Amen. Kids, come on up. We're going to do singing and praising and beating on the drums. Christ is sending you. Thanks be to God.